Hi, this is Mrs. D, and today we're going to be doing one-step equations. This is the first part of one-step equations where all of our equations are adding and subtracting. So let's go ahead and get started. So when we're solving one-step equations, the first step we want to do is identify the term on the same side of the equation with the variable. So let's look at a couple of examples here so we can figure this first step out. So first we have x plus 4 equals 8. So all we want to do is identify what's happening on the same side with the variable. Well, the variable in our situation here is x, and on the same side as the variable, I have x plus 4. So that's what I'm going to be working with in order to solve this on the next step. Your other example here is x minus 3 equals 11. My variable on this one is also x. And in this case, on the same side as the variable, I have x minus 3. Now it's important to know when I say the same side, I'm talking about different sides of the equal sign. That's what's going to split our problem into two parts, side 1 and side 2. And we want to keep those sides balanced in order to solve for that x. So let's go on to the next step. Once we've identified what's going on on the same side of that equal sign with our variable, next we want to balance the equation by performing the opposite operation on both sides of the equal sign. So back to our first example, we identified first that we have x plus 4 on the same side as the equal sign. Well that means we're going to now perform the opposite operation, and the opposite operation of plus 4 is a minus 4. And then we want to do this on both sides of the equation. Whatever I do on one side of that equal sign, I have to also do on the other side. This is how I keep it balanced. So let's look at our second example. On this one, on the same side as the variable, I had x minus 3. Well, the opposite operation of minus 3 is plus 3. So I'm going to add 3 to both sides. Whatever you do to one side, you always have to do to the other side. So now that we've identified what's going on on one side of the equation with the variable, and now we've also added our opposite, Next, we're going to isolate the variable by solving both sides of the equation to find the value of that variable. So again, we have x plus 4, and we decided in the second step that we were going to subtract 4 from both sides. So now let's go ahead and solve both sides. So on this side right here, I have 4 minus 4. Well, 4 minus 4 is 0 and 0 plus x just equals x, so now I have isolated my variable on the left side. All I have left is my variable x. On the right side, I'm going to solve 8 minus 4, and 8 minus 4 is 4. So now I have decided that 4 is what my x equals in this situation. For the next one, on the other example, we had x minus 3, and we decided we were going to add 3, so we could do the opposite. So when you solve this part right here, I have 3 minus 3, or in this case negative 3 plus 3, which equals 0, and 0 plus x equals x, so now I've isolated my variable on the left. On the right side, I'm going to solve 11 plus 3, which is 14. So for our second example, x equals 14. So after we've gone through our three steps here, let's go ahead and try a few practice problems by going through the process. First we have 5 plus x equals 12. So we first want to identify what's happening on the same side as the variable. In this case, I have a plus 5. Even though the 5 is written first, it's still a positive 5. And so if I'm going to perform the opposite, the opposite of plus 5 is minus 5. Whatever I do to one side, I have to do to the other side. So regardless of where this x is on the left side of the equal sign, that's still the side that I'm working with. Now I want to solve this, and 
5 minus 5 is 0, so I have x left on the left side. 12 minus 5 is 7, and so now I have solved for x. Now, one thing I didn't show you yet that makes this really easy is you can take your answer, x equals 7, you can plug the 7 back into the original equation and solve it to check your work. So if I plug in a 7 here, 7 plus 5 equals 12, so I do know that this checks out. For our next example, we have x minus 10 equals 4. So again, let's identify what's happening on the same side as the variable. In this case, I have minus 10, so I'm going to add 10, which is the opposite, to both sides. Once I've done that, I can go ahead and solve. Negative 10 plus 10 is 0, so on this side I have x left, and then 4 plus 10 is 14. Now, take that answer, 14, plug it back into the original problem for x, and 14 minus 10 equals 4, so that one checks out as well. For our third example, we have x plus 13 equals 10. So let's identify on the same side as the variable, I have plus 13. So I'm going to do the opposite, which is minus 13 on both sides. 13 minus 13 cancels, so on the left side, all I have left is my variable x, and on the right side, 10 minus 13, we're gonna use our integer rules. 10 minus 13 means I'm going to subtract, because they have different signs, and I'm subtracting a bigger number, so I'm going to end up with a negative three. Again, you can solve it or check your work by plugging this in. So if I have a negative three plus 13, these have different signs, so I'm going to subtract, which is 10. And in this first situation with the original problem, 13 is bigger than negative 3. I'm sorry, 13 is bigger than 3, so that means I'm going to have a positive 10 as my answer. All right, let's go to the last example here. This one's written a little bit differently because the first thing I want to do is identify what's happening on the same side as the x. And in this case, the x happens to be on the right side of the equal sign. So I want you to go ahead and pause the video and follow the steps that we have to solve this and try and solve this one on your own first and then come back and we'll check it together. Okay, so the first thing we want to do after we've identified what's happening on the same side as the x in this case, it's a negative four, and the opposite of negative four is plus four. Whatever I do to one side, I have to do to the other. So now I can go ahead and solve. So negative four plus four equals zero. So on this right side, I still have x left, and then nine plus four on the left side equals 13. If I were to plug in the 13, for the, the x in the original problem, 13 minus 4 equals 9, so I know that this one checks out. Another thing you can do with a problem like this, if you want to rewrite it to where you switch and have the x on the left side, you can do that, and in that case you would write negative 4 plus x equals 9. As long as you keep everything the same, as far as your terms and the positive or negative in front of each number or variable, then you can switch what's happening on the same side as the equal sign. So this time I would still solve it the same by adding four to both sides, but what this does is it puts my variable on the left side. I still get the same answer. Let's go ahead and recap the steps that we have for one-step equations. And first, we're gonna identify the term on the same side of the equation with the variable. Next, I'm gonna balance the equation by performing the opposite operation on both sides of the equal sign. And then last, I'm gonna isolate the variable by solving both sides of the equation to find the value of that variable. 
I hope that this video helped you understand solving one-step equations with add and subtract. If you still need more help, you can watch this a couple of times and go through the examples, and then be ready to ask some specific questions so that I can help you out. This is Mrs. D signing off. Thanks for joining me for the first part of one-step equations. Have a great day. Bye.